So you're in the market for a new phone and you just have one question. Hey Mark, which phone should I get? Should I get the standard Galaxy S23 or the big brother, the Galaxy S23 Ultra? For those that are running low on time, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, get the Galaxy S23 over the Ultra. Now, if you, if you guys want more details as to how I came to that conclusion, keep watching. In today's video, we're going to go over some of the differences between the phones so I can make your purchasing decision easier. And if you guys are interested in these phones, I'll have a link down below where you can get $100 of Samsung credit and really sweet carrier deals. So if you guys are interested, check them out. So let's start out by talking about the biggest difference between the two phones and it all comes down to one thing, size. The Galaxy S23 Ultra has a massive 6.8 inch display and the S23 has a modest 6.1 inch display. Now looking at them side by side shows a clear difference and I'll go ahead and say this. If you choose comfort over everything, this is the phone you want. It Not, not just because it's small, but the weight, it, it's so light. It's 168 grams, I believe. And then as a comparison, the S23 Ultra is like 200 and like 35 grams. So it is considerably heavier. And this phone is just so fun to use. And I don't know, it just fits your hands so much better. I mean, I, I, like, like I said, if you choose comfort over everything, th this is it. This is it right here. hundred percent, hundred percent easy. Both of the phones have a 120 hertz display, which does have a peak brightness level of 1750 nits, which is a pretty weird measurement that not a lot of people know how to, uh, like articulate in their heads. So I'm just going to go ahead and say this bright. It is, uh, it is, they're both very, very bright. <laughs> The S23 Ultra does have a screen resolution of Quad HD Plus as opposed to Full HD Plus on the S23, and I've had a ton of people ask me if the if the if the screen quality is noticeable. They're asking me, hey, if I get the S23 or the S23 Plus with the Full HD uh, Plus display, am I going to notice the pixels? Am I going to get a worse experience than the S23 Ultra? The answer to that is absolutely not. I mean, I'm looking at both of the displays right now and I cannot see a difference. I, I just cannot see a difference at all. No, dude, I can't, I can't see a difference. This, this just looks funny. No one's using their phones like this. You know what I mean? Another difference with the displays is that the Ultra has a curved display and the S23 has a flat display. Personally, I prefer flat displays. It just feels better to use in the hand. But I, I also must admit that the curved display does have a more kind of premium, luxurious look to it. So it all just kind of depends on what you prefer. But personally, like I said, I prefer flat. The pricing of these two phones is the difference between eating dinner tonight or maybe going to bed a little bit early so you don't have to eat dinner, therefore you save some money. Uh, the, the S23 Ultra starts out at $1,200 and the S23 starts out at $800, which is a $400 difference. But if we consider the deals that are going on right now, at best case scenario, you could pick up the S23 Ultra for around $200 and you can pick up the S23 for... um free. So again, click the link below and see if you, if you qualify for all those deals. But if you do, that's really good. I would still get the S23 personally because it's free. I mean, who doesn't like free? So let's talk about the performance between these two phones. Now you might think, hey, Mark, what are you talking about? They both have the same exact chip, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy, which is an overclocked version of the regular Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. But if you get the base model 128 gigabyte S23, uh, you're going to get uh, UFS 3.1 storage speeds. Meanwhile, this starts out at 256 gigs, so you're automatically getting UFS 4.0. If you want 4.0 on the S23, you have to upgrade to the 256 gigabyte model. On paper, the difference between UFS 4.0 and 3.1 is quite apparent. You're basically getting double the speed while saving nearly 50% of the energy. So it's really efficient. And like I said, well, it's two times faster. Now that's not to say if you get the 128 gigabyte S23, you're gonna have a horrible experience. Of course not. I mean, if you've used the S22, that has UFS 3.1 in it, and it's a fine phone even today. 
So the battery life. Now, look, this is obviously a little silly to compare because, well, obviously the S23 Ultra with its massive 5,000 milliamp hour battery is gonna last a lot longer than the S23 and the S23 has a 3,900 milliamp hour battery. The Ultra is possibly the best Android phone when it comes to the battery if we're looking at the entire package. Sure, there are some gaming phones, dedicated gaming phones that might have better battery life, but as a whole package, those gaming phones probably don't have a good camera. Some of them have a really kind of choppy, not really smooth operating system. So as a whole entire package for what you're getting, I truly believe the S23 Ultra has the best battery of any Android phone in its competition range. With the S23 Ultra, I'm comfortably getting around seven and a half to eight hours of screen on time, which is really good. And by the way, that's with the always on display turned on. That's with quad HD resolution turned on, everything turned on. So just straight out of the box configuration, nothing turned off, nothing, you know, it is amazing. It lasts so long. Now with the standard S23, you could probably expect around six to six and a half hours. In fact, right now I'm at 50% of battery. Actually, I'm going to take a screenshot. Let me pull up my battery and right there. So I'm going to take a screenshot. So, uh, as you guys are seeing on screen, my battery is at 50% and my screen on time is basically three hours, you know? So let's, let's just call it three hours. So if you extrapolate that information, this phone should last you six hours. But if you look right there, it still says learning usage patterns. So with Android phones, uh, you get the best amount of battery when that learning period is over. And that usually takes around three to four uh, full charges uh, to do. And then after that, the battery life might get even better. So maybe six and a half hours, six hours, 45 minutes. That would be wild but we'll see. I'll give you guys battery updates as the days go on. But this is a huge, huge, I mean, I'm going to say it again. This is a huge improvement over the S22, the regular S22 from last year that lasted like, I don't remember, probably like four, four to four and a half hours. It was bad. But with this one, you're, I mean, you're getting, you're getting great battery life, honestly. But of course, if battery life is something that you're looking for and you just need the best amount of battery life, man, clear winner, clear winner. Charging speeds are also slightly different. The S23 charges at a peak of 25 watts and the S23 Ultra charges at a peak of 45 watts, aka super fast charging 2.0. But remember, the S23 Ultra has a much higher battery capacity to charge, but even so, it, you'll, you should expect about 60% of battery life from zero in about 30 minutes, whereas the S23 will get you around 50% in 30 minutes from zero. So, I mean, you know, the, dif the difference is, isn't really like huge, but it's there. Now, if you're looking for the most amount of storage options, the S23 Ultra definitely has the win. You start out at 256 gigabyte as a base. You can go up to 512 or even one terabyte of storage, that local storage. That's, that's quite insane. Meanwhile, the S23 starts out at 128 gigabytes and goes up to 256 gigabytes with no more available options. So 256 is the most you can get with this phone. RAM is also different on both the phones. If you get the S23 Ultra with uh, 512 gigabytes or one terabyte, you're getting 12 gigabytes of RAM. Whereas on the S23 Plus and the S23, you just get eight gigabytes no matter which uh, storage size you get. Now, the difference in real world is, is it's, it's there. You know, it's there. With the S23 Ultra, for example, I could be on Twitter and I'll leave my screen at a certain position as I'm reading. And then if I go and do something else and come back to Twitter, the app refreshes and then I lose the place that I was reading at because the entire app refreshed. With the S23 Ultra, that, that happens also, but not as frequently. It leaves apps in RAM a lot longer, obviously, than the S23. So, um, so basically, if you're looking for the most amount of performance, the, mo the least amount of app refreshes, then 12 gigabytes is the one you want. But remember, it's only on the 512 and one terabyte model. So now let's move on to cameras, which is another huge difference between the two phones. So if you're looking for the most versatile camera setup, right, the one that you wanna bring on vacation or stuff like that, 
the S23 Ultra is going to be the king. The main sensor is 200 megapixels compared to 50 megapixels on the S23. And here's a quick side by side of the two. Now, uh, the differences are kind of hard to spot, right? Well, let's zoom in. And as you see, the differences are there now, but it's not too crazy considering how far we've zoomed in. In normal scenarios, both phones do take a 12 and a half megapixel binned photo anyway. And the differences, as you guys are seeing on screen right now, from that 12 and a half megapixel binned photo, um, they both do a great job. I, you know, if you're not zooming in a thousand times and pixel peeping comparing between the two phones, yo, both of these phones do a, a great job with the main camera. In my opinion, the true differences start when you start to zoom in and use the actual telephoto lenses. The Ultra comes with two telephoto cameras, both of which are 10 megapixel, but they offer two different sets of zoom ranges. The first one being three times, which you guys are seeing here, and the second one being 10 times. And here is where the major differences start to show. Both phones are capable of 30 times zoom, but it's not really usable on the S23 as it looks like a wet paper blanket. Uh, the 30 times zoom on the Ultra clearly looks just a whole lot better. The Ultra tops out at 100 times zoom, although I can't say I would ever post this kind of photo anywhere online, so uh, it can do 100 times. I just don't really see the, the point. It doesn't look good at all. Stick to 30 times zoom. The selfie cameras and the ultra wide cameras on both the phones are identical this time around. So if taking selfies and ultra wides is your favorite pastime activity, both phones will do you just right. But if macro photography is your drink of choice, the ultra is the only phone in the S23 lineup that offers it. So do keep that in mind. Video recording on both the phones is really, really good. I, I, I'm so surprised at how well Samsung improved the video recording. So now uh, both phones can do 8K 30, so you're not getting uh, like a worse quality uh, video camera with the S23 compared to the S23 Ultra. So both record up to 8K 30. You obviously get 4K uh, 30, 4K 60. You get some insane slow motions. Uh, both look good. Uh, they both look basically identical, at least in my opinion. But let me know what you guys think. Now, if you want a phone that has the S Pen, well, obviously the S23 Ultra is going to be the only one to get out of the Samsung lineup. Um, but that's only if you use it and make sure you really want it. Okay, I mean, I'm telling you, make sure you really want it. Okay, because I thought that I wanted it. I forget that it's there 90% of the time. I, I just... I, I don't have a use for it, so maybe you do, maybe you're uh, an artist, maybe you're uh, some sort of digital creator, maybe an architect of some sorts, you know, and uh, you just need that pen, get the Ultra. <laughs> Neither of the two phones get hot outside, but do keep in mind we're still in February and it's kind of chilly outside. I mean, right now it is 45 degrees Fahrenheit, which is... Uh, this much Celsius. So it's not even hot outside. So I don't really know how these phones are going to hold up in the North Carolina heat in the summertime, but I guess only time will tell. Uh, when it comes to cellular connectivity, when it comes to call quality, identical. I didn't notice anything different. Uh, but the speakers, the actual speaker quality is also really good on both. Now, obviously, the Ultra being a bigger phone, the speakers sound more full, but that's not to say the S23 sounds bad because it doesn't. This thing sounds great. So which phone should you buy? Well, I've listed some of the biggest differences that I personally think people would, uh, would appreciate. So you can kind of see for yourself if those differences make you want to spend the extra $400 and possibly have a phone that's not quite comfortable in the hand, or you could save $400 and have a, a more, a much more comfortable phone to hold in the hand. Although the cameras are not going to be that good. The battery life won't be that good, but still good. I mean, that's really acceptable, uh, acceptable battery life on the uh, S23, but there's just something about this form factor, the, the, the flat display, the smaller size, it's just so nice. I, I, this year, well, actually last year, was, was my first time that I did not get the, the, the biggest iPhone. I usually get the biggest phone, like no matter what, right? But I got the iPhone 14 Pro, which is obviously smaller than the Pro Max. The iPhone 14 Pro has a 6.1 inch display, and so does this. 
and it's just so comfortable. I, I'm starting to like smaller phones nowadays. It's just, yeah, the battery life isn't that good when, when compared to the larger phone, obviously, but that's not to say battery life is bad. As you guys saw, it's really good. And I, I just really, I, I like this phone a lot more than I thought it would, put it that way. I thought I was going to get it. I was going to review it, then sell it. No, I'm keeping this. I, I'm definitely keeping this. And I'm keeping the Ultra for those days that I go on vacation. I'm actually going to Dubai next month. I'm taking this to Dubai. Okay, I'll, I want the I want that amazing Zoom, right? But obviously not everyone can afford two phones. So honestly, save 400 bucks. Get the S23. That's just my opinion, though. If if whatever I mentioned, you prefer on you prefer the Ultra, get the Ultra. I mean, <laughs> it's not it's not like the Ultra is going to be a worse phone, right? But if you guys want to save some cash, get the S23. I think you're going to like it. So what do you guys think? And by the way, if you do have the Ultra or the S23 or even the S23 Plus, leave me your comment down below on your experience with the phone. And so that way, if anyone is interested in buying the phone, they can watch this video. They can read the comments and kind of put two and two together and then make even a better decision. So you're, you'll be helping someone out as well. So um, that's it. If you guys enjoyed today's video, definitely click that like button. It's completely free to you, but it helps me and the channel out a lot, and I truly appreciate it. And if you are new here, consider subscribing. I will be doing a lot more videos, including the S23 Plus, which I'll be comparing to the Ultra in my next video, so stay tuned for that. And as always, thanks for watching. Adios.